Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and today is December 7th of 2024. And uh, in honor of December 7th, 1941, a.k.a. Pearl Harbor Day, we're going to be playing Medal of Honor Rising Sun, which is one of the very few World War II games that takes place in the Pacific Theater of Operations of World War II. Kind of strange that. Primarily, all the World War II games take place in the uh, European Theater of Operations for whatever reason. One wonders why. And hello, everyone. And our rules of engagement are shoot anything that moves. All right, so this is a game that was released on the uh, PlayStation 2 and Xbox. I originally played it on the Xbox, uh, but we're looking at the PS2 version because it's the easiest to emulate. And like with Medal of Honor Frontline, this is a game best played with safe states. So with that, let us begin. And possibly the tropical environments were harder, but I don't know. I get the feeling that it had a little bit of, uh, well, you know. They didn't want to offend anyone. But I could be reading too much into that. Now, this is a PlayStation 2 game, but it has a very, very impressive opening, uh, uh, opening battle. Eh, I don't know, maybe. But Modern Warfare takes place afterwards. This game's aged remarkably well, although, although, uh, the people still look, uh, like they were from 2004. Move it, you maggots, move it! So top side, let's go on a double, hurry up! And yeah, the rest of the game's all right. It's not perfect, by any means. You think you're having a bad day? Stuff like this actually happens. Turn that down. Yeah, but this does give you like when you just read like a stale date. It it's hard to say like uh, and yeah, shit like that actually happened too. Can't all be perfect, maybe. <laughs> and back then, it looks worse than real time now. Kind of. A lot of modern day graphics do look pretty crap though, especially for what they should be. So this game has those hidden objectives. This is not just, you know, uh, a walking simulator like what you might have today. But yeah, you know, just reading the date, December 7th, doesn't really give you the idea of what actually happened. This is actually when the United States uh, joined the Second World War, although... People like to classify the uh, Japanese invasion of China as like, that's the start of it, but really that was a local conflict. It doesn't really become a world war until later. And I don't think the uh, fire extinguishers back in 41 were quite this good. Uh, as of 41, the Japanese did not use those tactics. Uh, one thing that's kind of interesting is the kamikaze tactics were actually less dangerous than a uh, actual attack, believe it or not. That's just a uh, war for you. A lot of times things don't really make that much sense. Yeah, modern graphics, oh, this is how you save. We're gonna use a telephone. What is that strange device? Now the game takes place, uh, I think during the early years of the uh, Pacific Theater. This has, a, has much more of a uh, concrete narrative than something like Medal of Honor Allied Assault or even Frontline. You have actual named characters, there's an actual villain. Japanese guns were pretty good. I don't think I would ever buy one just because they used weird ammo. But they weren't bad. They worked. Now, of course, I grew up in an era where uh, the History Channel talked about how uh, all the Japanese guns were terrible, like the Arasaka rifle, although it wasn't actually made by Arasaka, it was made by Kajiro Nambu, but whatever. That one pistol that everybody hated on back in the early 2000s uh, is the one they all talked about. I'm not really sure you could shoot down an aircraft with a BAR, but hey, you never know. Apparently I just did somehow. Defend the USS California, I don't know. I'm not sure I want to... Anyway, we'll save it anyway. In California in the 40s wasn't that bad. 
Historically, though, California was not what it is today until pretty late. Yeah, there's a lot of different games that actually do have the Pearl Harbor attack in it. I remember there was an old, old flight sim that uh, lets you defend Pearl Harbor with a uh, UFO. No joke. Like, you legitimately could do that. Gotta love the early 2000s. Uh, it's the pistol with the exposed sear. Well, the thing about California is that it's a weird state. Believe it or not, it was a red state at one point when Texas was actually a blue state, believe it or not. Uh, it wouldn't be until I think the late 90s that uh, California would become the California we all know today. Which makes me kind of worried about Texas. At least Texas has bad weather, so too many people won't want to move here. We like our bad weather, thank you very much. Now, this is uh, one of those games that, uh, as John Doe would say, it's like, what the fuck do I do kind of games. Mainly because you never know, like, how long something's going to last. Like, when you defend the U.S. California here, you don't really know how long you're supposed to do it for. I don't think you can die here, but I am taking damage. Also, I don't think you can shoot uh, torpedoes with a machine gun. I mean, you kind of have to because it's a video game, but I would think they'd be moving so fast you wouldn't even have a chance to see it. But once again, video game. And also, you gotta love the fact that um, uh, Griffin here, Peter Griffin, uh, has probably shot down more Japanese planes than actually showed up during the Pearl Harbor attack. But still though, for 2004, this looks really good, especially on the PlayStation 2. When you consider that the PS2 was the weakest console of its generation, but also sold the most, because I'm a DVD player. And it might seem silly now, but like being able to play DVDs was a pretty big deal, because they were legitimately superior to VHS. I mean, you just put a disc in, no rewinding, no nothing. And the video quality was a lot better. I mean, VHS wasn't terrible, but, uh, you know, compared to DVD, it was pretty trash. My first ever DVD was the Will Smith Wild Wild West adaptation. That is not a terrible movie. It's not a good representation of the show, but it's still pretty entertaining. I mean, a giant mechanical spider, you know, a flying bicycle, you know, I could go for that. It's a movie that definitely could never be made today because of one scene in it. We defended California. If the Japanese had left the U.S. alone, I don't know. It's hard to say. I, there's no way the Japanese could have kept their empire. There's really no way the Germans could have won just from lack of oil. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. The, real, the reason why the Japanese, at least one of the reasons why the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor was they thought that if they knocked out all the battleships that the U.S. would be too weak to attack somehow. There's been a lot of st a lot of uh, debate about whether or not the Pearl Harbor attack was even worth it. Atlantis, the Lost Empire, that is a classic. That is a true steampunk movie there. But if the Japanese had blown up the oil storage, that would have really damaged the war effort. But they didn't. Uh, they didn't get the uh, aircraft carriers. I think we only had three at the time. Uh, so, you know... <laughs> But then again, they did blow up a few ships. They still killed a lot of people, like, I think over 2,000. Now, Pearl Harbor wasn't the only Japanese attack on that day. They also attacked uh, Guam, Wake Island, and a few others. One of the things that's quite fascinating, though, is you got to consider for a moment that this is 1941 here, and you've got dedicated ships that can take off and land planes less than... 50 years after the first plane flew. Yeah, VHS is starting to get... Whoa. Now look at this. 2004 on the PlayStation 2. That is pretty ridiculous. Like, this is pretty bloody impressive. And we actually have to try 
Also, that plane probably wouldn't be able to do that, but whatever. It's a video game. And we'd probably die just from the pressure waves from those explosions. But, you know what? Um, video game. You want to play a game or not, people? They wouldn't be flying quite that close to the ground either, but it also wouldn't be that impressive. Most of these, if this was historically accurate, we'd barely be able to see the planes and wouldn't be able to hit any of them. Because actually hitting a moving target, not easy. Fighting the Japanese, yeah, I do recognize the, uh, the irony here. Or the fact that my car is made by Nissan. I don't know if we had alien technology, it was just the technology at the time was kind of low-hanging fruit and the people back then were very, very smart and dedicated. Because it's much easier to go from a flying kite to something like this than, you know, going from like that to a space plane. There's a lot more that goes into that. And just because, and also let's just add to the fact that people were a bit more motivated back in these days. Although, technology is improving in a way that I think isn't quite as dramatic. I mean, you look at, like, uh, SpaceX. Not the radio. I think if we'd actually found a ship at Roswell, the technology would be even more advanced. We're getting anime! I don't know, should I be joking when I, something as serious is going on? That's still impressive even to this day, 20 years later. Or 21 years later. Oh my god! We've lost the Arizona! God help him. This can't be happening. There's actually a memorial over the uh, Arizona wreck. I think it's still leaking oil to this very day. This is a very iconic photo of the Pearl Harbor attack. Now, if you want to like, if you want to learn more about the Pearl Harbor attack, consult your local library, or actually just watch YouTube. Uh, there's a channel called Drakenfels, uh, which did a like five-part series on Pearl Harbor. It's really good. Uh, I don't think they could actually do a select fire BAR simply because it would have been too heavy and too expensive. I mean, that thing weighed like 20 pounds. Ah, oh, that's really cool. Exactly. There's still some people alive that survived Pearl Harbor. Like, there are over a hundred now. They made people tough back then. I'm not sure if that is actually early Ermi talking right now, or a guy who sounds a lot like him. So we've downed 20 enemy planes. Griffin here, the guy we're playing as, uh, would basically be rewarded like every medal ever. I think maybe like 10 planes were shot down the entire attack. I mean, if you look at how chaotic this is, I can see why it'd be hard to remember anything. Because, like, it's hard to follow what's going on, and I'm just playing a game and not even really being shot at. And you consider that there's a couple hundred planes, bombs going off, nobody has a clue what's going on. It would be a very traumatic experience. Oh man, those graphics. Oh, oh. You go from those really good ship graphics to that. You listen up, Marines. You take a good long look. Oh, none of you ever see a day like this again. Or nobody will ever know what it was like. But maybe the ones that lived through it. You just be damn sure you don't forget the ones who didn't. And yeah, at the end of the war, they were trying to make some mag-fed Garands. But really, if you want a mag-fed Garand, you basically just have an M14. December 7th, 1941. 10 in the morning. 
The United States suffers one of history's most devastating Yeah, Griffin surprises. should get a promotion. He's basically Captain America at this point. And her once invincible Navy this was a very popular thing back in the early 2000s. There was a lot of World War II documentaries. I grew up on these things. Prior to Pearl Harbor, a lot the of the uh, World War II documentaries were very off boomerish, and but they were still pretty good. Burma with limited resistance. At home, Japan was building up a seemingly superior naval fleet, led by some of the world's And yeah, we would witness that. Ugh. But Admiral Yamamoto's prediction had come true. The aftermath of the Day of Infamy had indeed awakened the sleeping giant that was America. As the Emperor's armies march toward the Philippines, the United States takes action. Yeah, Tales of the Gun. Oh man, they hated on Japanese weapons, which, consider the people who made it would have had parents who fought in World War II directly, you know? And, and so, I can see why they'd hate on it, but those weapons were actually pretty good and actually did work. Yeah, Tales of the Gun, man. I My grandfather taped all that off a of TV. It's like, taped it on VHS! Say yes to VHS. And this is where the game gets kind of crap. It's not bad by any means, but man, the aiming in this is weird. I mean, it's, it, the aiming's not terrible, but for 2004, it's a little archaic. One of the things you gotta consider about Japan is they were, they went from what was effectively a feudal society to an industrial one in like 40 years. So they didn't have quite the industrial capacity that the US would have. I did not know that was a grenade. I am so sorry. <laughs> okay, what? Okay, that's the aiming controls there. Yeah, Griffin's pretty strong, cause- Joseph, is that you? Oh man, it's good to see you. You made it off to California, I can't believe it. You got real problems. So we've got a Thompson, we've got a 1911, and we got a Garen. Griffin is like a super soldier here or something because he's carrying like almost a hundred pounds of guns. Just the, and then the ammo, it's like, man. And yeah, the Japanese just did not have the industrial capacity to really keep up as the war progressed. All right, let's see if we can actually shoot somebody here. Okay, here we go. Wreck it. Oh yeah, when you aim, you just stop. It's not bad. It's still, this is still a somewhat early PlayStation 2, you know, FPS. The fact it works at all is still pretty good. That Thompson weighs more than the M1 Garand. Uh, let's see. B -b 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 Mail Call was an awesome show on the uh, History Channel. Had Arlie Ermey as the gunny. I used to watch that all the goddamn time. Sadly, the gunny would die in 2017. Unfortunately, he would end up getting canceled because uh, he disagreed politically with the powers that be. But hey, that's what happens to everybody, right? The Garen's like a 10-pound rifle. Oh, his AI fucked up. Okay, what was the controls to switch weapons? There we go. Despite the clunky aiming, this game's still pretty impressive for what you get to do. Uh, like, this is a pretty big level we're about to fight through here. Now, what's kind of interesting, yeah, the Ruger 22, yeah, is based off the baby Nambu that Bill Ruger got from, uh, well, World War II. But it looks a lot like the Luger, as did the uh, baby Nambu, so everybody just kind of thinks it's like the Luger. I'm a big fan of that Ruger standard. It's got a red dot on it, just like... Nature intended. We're gonna fix the tank just by, you know, putting a cogwheel on it, because that makes sense. CMPA still has Garands. I have no idea. Back in 2019, I picked me up a Garand. It's a damn fine rifle. Very expensive to shoot, though. Like, like, uh, proper M2 ball is like a dollar fifty a round now. Like, it's nuts. Uh, let's segment where his friends educate him other French. Maybe 40k. Huh. Yeah, 40k is a good thing to educate people on just because it is a very difficult franchise to get into. Because it's pretty nuanced compared to others. 
I like how that dude is just rocking a uh, light machine gun there. I do like how the uh, Tommy gun here, I did not mean to throw that grenade. There we go, that's the control for this. It has only 20 rounds. If, they, if, if the NFA were ever repealed, I would buy a Thompson. Like, I would want a, you know, legit Thompson, not one of those semi-auto things that barely works. Now that was a lunge mine, that actually did exist. And talk about uh, your shit jobs in the military. Oh, let's see, what's he gonna say here? Ba -ba -ba. So, yeah, talking about industrial capacity, I think one factory in the US manufactured more machine guns than the entire Japanese military was able to manufacture in the entire war. No, no, it was one, it was one factory in one, oh crap. We should be using 30 rounders. No, honest man needs more than 20 rounds. For California compliance. For half price, not bad. A gangster Tommy gun. Yeah, I would prefer a, a, a 1928 myself. That drum mag, man. That drum mag is sexy. But I imagine it weighs like 20 pounds. There does exist a 100 round uh, Thompson magazine. That sounds like the most ridiculous thing ever and I want it. I mean, I can't imagine it be that useful, but whatever. Briefly explain the war in heaven, the birth of the emperor. That take you, briefly explain. That sounds like a four hour explanation of what all that is. I mean, that's the problem when you've got like 30 years, no, 40 years almost of continuity you have to talk about. Uh, 556 NATO, 45 8 CP for an M1 Garen, man. That's gotta be complicated. If I was ever to convert my Garand, it would probably be the 308, but I don't want to mess with it. I want it to be stock. It's not a gun I shoot that much anyway, so I, I can, I'll pay the exorbitant fee for the actual M2 ball. Okay, let's go ahead and save just in case I get killed. Because we got save states. I tried to do like a, a 40k introduction once uh, in text form and it was like two pages and that was back around 2004 and the continuity basically just had added the towel. Oh yeah, we gotta go through a, uh, we gotta go through the sewer. I don't think you can pick up the Japanese weapons. Like, See, for a PlayStation 2 FPS, this is really impressive. The Xbox version didn't look that much different. I think the graphics were a little better, but not by much. Like, if it wasn't like a PC port, most Xbox games looked barely better than their PlayStation 2 counterparts. There's also a M1 Garand that's been converted into some really powerful Magnum cartridge. But they're like basically legendary weapons that maybe like three people have. Uh, it's one of those weird things. Well, considering that Griffin was able to blow up, like, I don't know how many planes during Pearl Harbor, this guy is basically death incarnate. No. Yeah, it's sad that the AVP games are basically dead now, because there hasn't been one since 2010. And I didn't even really like that one that much when it came out, although I appreciate it more today. Most modern games just don't really interest me that much, though. Like, that new Indiana Jones game does not look that great to me. And graphically, it doesn't look that impressive for what it should be. And even then, it's just one of those intercool games. Is it set between uh, Raiders and uh, Last Crusade? It's like, I don't really need to know that story. Now, maybe if you set it, you know, after Last Crusade, then I might actually be interested, but it's not. 
And yeah, AVP2 is pretty much freeware. You can get it from uh, My Abandoned Wear, and I think AVP Unknown has a link to it. But they kind of got to be careful of that so they don't get shut down. Uh oh. The Japanese tanks were crap, but if you show up with a tank and the other guy doesn't have it, it doesn't matter how bad it is. Uh, I think it is populated. The last time I played it, it was. More older games. Yeah, I looked at Conscript. That's not really my kind of game. It's a top-down kind of game and... Oh, crap. I'll throw a grenade at him. That's got to do something, right? It does not matter how crap a tank is. If you have one and the enemy doesn't, um, you're kind of screwed. Because tanks are still pretty powerful no matter what. Yeah, this game's still pretty good. I'm, I'm kind of getting into it again. Quite the advantage. Semi-auto sim. Well, at the start of the war, the U.S. did have that, but they hadn't actually all been issued. It wouldn't be issued for a while. Uh, at this point in time, I think we're, like, in 1942 right now, it's actually not historical. Like, you would not see it. I don't think you would see the Marines have uh, Garands until, I think, 43. They'd still be rocking 1903s at this point. Because they still had to fill all the various contracts for the uh, army. But yeah, the, the, the United States had more advantages than just the uh, M1 Garand. Like, the tanks were better, the planes were better, the logistics were better. I mean, the U.S. started the war with, I think, maybe three aircraft carriers and ended the war with, like, almost 30, if I'm not mistaken. It's like, we went from, uh, kind of basic aircraft carriers to... How do I crouch? Here we go. Kind of basic aircraft carriers to, uh, the Essexes. With a few of those even existing until the 1990s. And hello, Neji. Uh... You take out the treasure on the tank? Yeah, it's still a threat. <laughs> uh, Foxhole. I don't think I've actually seen that. Now, like, uh, when it comes to, like, small arms, a lot of the other countries thought about getting a uh, semi-auto. Like, the, fr the French wanted one, but they could never get their act together. The Germans didn't really care because they were going to base the squad around a machine gun. Uh, the British, I forget why they didn't have one. Ew. Yeah, Griffin's not going to be smelling too good. Uh, let's see. Um, the Russians had one, the SBT-40, but they couldn't manufacture enough of them. And the Japanese, well, they went from feudalism to industrial, to an industrial society in like 40 years, so they weren't going to have one for a while. Uh, the, the Gewehr 43 wasn't bad. They just couldn't manufacture enough of them. And even if they could, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. But, yeah, the Gewehr 43, you know, it has a detachable magazine, but they couldn't manufacture enough of the mags. Really, the, uh, Gewehr 43 and the Garand are about equal to a certain extent, although I have heard the Gewehr 43 is a little more accurate than the Garand. Although that's just, uh, hearsay more than anything else. I've never actually shot one. Uh, I will say that the uh, Garrett is a pretty accurate rifle. I've enjoyed mine. I've had it for like five years. Where does the time go? Yeah, it's disabled, right? <laughs> Dwight D. Eisenhower? Nice. We got prototypes and autos. This is true. Liberator. They made a uh, repro one of those. No further information is available. Well, that doesn't help me at all. And yeah, the Gewehr 43 did have a few issues, mainly because they had to manufacture that thing fast. That's one thing I didn't recognize until I saw a video on it. The Garand had, like, continuous development for, like, two decades, whereas the Gewehr 43 was basically designed, I think, in, like, a year. So the fact that it worked at all was pretty good. Uh... The Liberator is one of those weird guns. For those who doesn't know, for those who don't know what a Liberator is, it's a little single-shot sheet metal pistol that was uh, designed to be dropped in Moss over, I think, France, so like the Frenchies could shoot a German and take his gun. It's not a very good gun, but it worked. But I don't think they ever got dropped. 
I think what actually ended up happening is they just kind of rotted in a uh, warehouse and then finally just got scrapped. I mean, for a, it is a gun, so it's better than nothing. It's better than a knife. Let's go ahead and save. Now, the Japanese had some weird machine guns. They worked. Like, this one here is a weird-ass gun, but somehow it worked. You see that little hopper right there? What you're supposed to be able to do is you're supposed to be able to dump stripper clips to reload the gun. I mean, that just sounds so weird. I, if... I just feel like that's got to be so finicky. Like if a little bit of dust got in it, that should probably jam it up to hell and back. Uh, let's see. Buh, buh, buh. I think there's also a few other guns designed that were supposed to be kind of like the Liberator. There's like the deer pistol for Vietnam, which is like a nine millimeter thing. Oh crap. Oh, he's got a bayonet. Okay, that is a terrible animation, but I love it. See, I would not want somebody coming at me with a bayonet. I mean, getting shot at is one thing. Somebody with a pointy stick, with a knife, uh, that's just, yeah. Type 38. Yeah, the Type 38 was pretty good. I actually had a chance to get one of those that had been sporterized and converted to 30-06, but unfortunately, I just didn't have the money. Well Rod. The Well Rod is in this game. Uh, let's see. Oh, God, that's just nasty. That's just nasty. Let's see, um... There it is. Griffin, what are you doing? Why are you just like going, ugh, ugh? Aren't you supposed to be like... Hit that like a man. Okay, so I guess we're not supposed to go this way? Oh, there it is. Ugh. Griffin's gonna need like 15 showers. I would not want to ever have to go on a sewer. You ever see dirty jobs? Missing things like reactions to being shot. Yeah. M44 Mosin. I considered buying one of those once, but I ultimately got it the M9130. And that M9130 is pretty nice, but I don't think I would buy it today. Just because it's a bit long. Uh, the bolt is pretty sticky not because of it's uh not because it's cosmoly but just because it's kind of that design that way the singapore level reminds me of something that happened at that time when i was playing it back in the day that was where the uh toilet overflowed and it took like three days to get it fixed Gyuch. that was not fun i find it funny that it overflowed right when i was in part of the, su the sewer level too Sewers of New York. Found jewelry? Yeah. But I think you go in the sewer in the Singapore level. But I don't remember. It's been a long time since I played this game. Now, of course, this has the uh, typical Medal of Honor soundtrack that's really, really good. I'm not sure if this is Michael Gacchino or not. Michael Gacchino is one of those uh, unsung composers that nobody really talks about. Like he has done some really good work, including on the uh, Lost World Jurassic Park uh, PS1 game soundtrack. That game is terrible, though. Uh, indeed, indeed. To drop a grenade. So wait, do we use the grenade to like blow open the door? I don't think we actually blow up the door. I think we, uh... Yeah, here we go. Nope. We can blow up a million bloody planes, but we cannot. We got 20 grenades. Man, Griffin is strong. And that is a weak-ass grenade. Okay, I think we gotta blow something up, maybe. Nope, that's not it. Oh, he did not work on this one? Huh, I thought he had. It's still good work, whoever did this. I think my favorite work by Mr. Gikino would actually be the uh, soundtrack to Trek 2009. I mean, that's a god-awful movie that ruined Star Trek forever, but man, that soundtrack was good. Like, it was good. 
I feel like this is a bit better than a lot of the CODs just because uh, you can actually do a lot more just as the player. You don't have a bunch of bots that are basically going to steal all your kills. Wait, can we blow up the tank with the machine gun? Man, that's a lot of ammo. We shot him in the foot again. Oh, we can blow the tank up. Man, that's a really crappy tank. Maybe we're just using armor piercing. Uh, but I can get why uh, BJ was not a Marine. Just because uh, it makes sense that he'd be being dropped, you know, behind enemy lines and stuff like that. I'm not sure what BJ's supposed to be. I guess he's in the army? I don't think they ever really said what he was. Or if he did, I don't remember. I can picture him being like in the army, maybe a army ranger or something like that. Twisted generic science fiction. Yep. And then JJ ruined Star Wars. Thanks for that. After you use a different initiative where you bop it on your helmet before throwing. And yeah, that's not that does not instill with confidence. I do not want a grenade anywhere near my head. Grenades are some pretty awesome weapons. I mean, like, they are extremely dangerous. They got, like, a kill radius of, like, 30 feet. It's ridiculous. Corporal, you find some way to signal the demo team. I'll check out this truck. I mean, keep your eyes peeled for Jack. Yeah, because BJ was an OSS agent, but, like, what was he before that? I think we can save here. Yeah, but we don't need that, because we got save states! Slot one. Head off to you can boast they've ruined two of the greatest franchises? Yep. Okay, I thought we had to like... There we go. Had to pull on the right one. Army Ranger. Okay, that makes sense. Because he would be uh, kind of doing things on his own. But I think back when Wolfenstein came out, nobody cared like... Nobody really had that much interest in, like, the super lore. They just played the game. Dud grenades. Grenades are remarkably heavy. I've actually handled a couple dud grenades myself. And you better chuck them pretty far. Are you getting the back of this truck and shoot anything that moves? It's gonna be a bumpy ride. Yeah, because we got shit suspension. Hold on! Now, this is pretty awesome. Now, unfortunately, oh crap, I'm getting shot to pieces. Unfortunately, uh, the Griffin's brother, the dude in the uh, tank ship. The dude in the tank top and jeans is actually Griffin's brother, and that's going to be a plot point later on. Uh, I have no means of attacking that tank, sir. Well, he's a gunny, but and he works for a living. What you're supposed to do, I think, like I said, it's been a while since I've played the game. I think what you're supposed to do is not try to shoot a tank with a pistol like like Tom Hanks. That's a bad idea. Don't be like Tom Hanks. Hey, you're supposed to shoot the explosive barrels. Oh man, I'm so dead. It's the only problem with this uh, game is... Yep. That's the only problem with this game is... Uh... Oh crap, no, please don't tell me. There we go. Please don't tell me I did the whole level over again. Okay, so if I die again, actually, let's go ahead and uh, get the old uh, F1 key there. Okay, what we need to do is throw a grenade. That's a much better idea. Boom. Okay, let's... I don't think it was actually M16 mags. I think it was actually uh, M1 Garand clips. You do kind of need to tap the clip before you actually try to put it in the gun to get all the rounds seated. Loading an M1 Garand clip is a little weird because, like, uh, it's kind of like a magazine without a follower. You're, until you get it loaded, you kind of have your finger act as a follower. It's kind of weird in that regard. Right, let's save. Okay, let's just try to hit those goddamn bear. Oh, crap. Damn you, John C. Garand! 
Okay, I've missed too many of the barrels. I gotta try to hit that barrel with the first shot. Got him. I cannot. Okay, there we go. And. Okay, that did not do anything. Be nice if I had some sort of anti tank weapon. I think at the beginning of the war, uh, the only anti tank weapon the Americans had, the only thing we had, was a bloody uh, rock that we were supposed to put in between the tracks. It would be until late war that we'd have the bazooka. Uh, we're emulating the PlayStation 2 version. Man, that dude runs fast. Makes Robert Patrick look slow. I like how we just have a random field, field surgeon pack. Go stand next to the oil barrels. Check the chat as soon as I don't get my face shot off. This is a very good soundtrack. Okay, that actually is the enemy. There we go. Uh, you can shoot the M1 Garen with one bullet. That's it. And yeah, he probably... I'm sure the Tom Hanks character didn't think he was actually going to stop a tank with the 1911, but hey. Your brother. We, uh... We got a damn tough job done, and most of us made it out alive. Most of us, except your brother, but whatever. He's more cigar than man. Can't ask for more than that. I forgot how bad these people graphics were. The Type 26 revolver is definitely a gun of all time. I mean, if it's all you got, it's better than nothing. With American armed forces now fully... It's arguably better than a sword. Japanese-occupied South Pacific Islands are feeling the pressure. But hopes are crushed for a swift Allied victory in the Philippines. After a long, bloody battle... General MacArthur is ordered to retreat. Thousands of troops are left behind and forced to surrender. The enemy now controls the Philippines. MacArthur if I had actually had a fight back then, I don't think I would have ever surrendered. Just because knowing what happens in PO POW camps, especially Japanese ones, I think it'd be better to get blown away than to, you know, be tortured horribly. And hello, Riley Flaming Wookiee. It's just one of those things, like, I don't think I'd want to, you know, yeah, get tortured horribly. But people did survive. Those were some badasses, that's for sure. Uh, there's a TV show in the 1970s called The Black Sheep Squadron that was set in the uh, Pacific Theater. Uh, it chronicled the adventures of the titular Black, sea Black Sheep Squadron, a.k.a. Boeington's Bastards, headed by a guy named uh, Pappy Boeington. The real guy actually did get captured by the Japanese and was tortured, I think, for like two years, but survived the war. I think the German uh, POW camps weren't quite as bad, but they weren't uh, exactly like Hogan's heroes, though. We land across the beach, see to the airfield, destroy an ammo dump, eliminate any remaining resistance, sit tight till our relief arrives. Any questions? Yeah, I can see why. The thing about fighting in any sort of war, there's always a good chance you'll be the first one shot, blown up, or... Now, the U.S. Marines used a different sniper from the uh, Army. This was actually, I believe, a commercial scope. Actually, getting any hits, uh, that should have hit him. The scope's not zeroed. God, zeroing any kind of scope, not easy. Yeah, my grandfather was in the uh, Marines. He did not have too many nice things to say about it, though. Basically citing that a lot of the commanders weren't very smart. And Saving Private Ryan is one of the few realistic uh, war films. That D-Day scene, oh man. That'll traumatize you, that's for sure. And that's 
not even as bad as it would have been in real life. Although I still rate Longest Day as a better film. It certainly wasn't nearly as graphic. Down river. 93 Sporter. Hey, that's not bad. I always wanted one myself, but I just never got around to getting one. My favorite bolt action is still going to be the K98K. I mean, it's basically the ultimate form of uh, bolt action rifle. I still need to sight that thing in after getting a new front sight for it. This would be nice if I had like a submachine gun or something. I totally should have hit him. Uh, I would say the infield 1917 just because it has better sights. Uh, it's a bit heavier, but that that uh, rear aperture is really good. 1903, 45 to the head, a little better than uh, pointy stick. Uh, I'm ready to get right. Uh, is it right? I don't know what that said. But yeah, the 19, 1911, still good. Got a couple of those things. I'd love to have a World War II one, but I'm not willing to pay for it, though. I'm not going to pay a thousand bucks for a pistol just because it's from World War II. And you really can't shoot it because you kind of ruin the value if you do. And also, 45 ACP is not a bad round, but 9mm is so much cheaper. So much cheaper. I mean, more mass on target, you know. That's one of those things. As, as myths started to get debunked, people started saying a lot of these uh, classic calibers were just worthless. Like, oh, 45 ACP is not even as good as 9mm. It's like, well, 45 ACP is a lot heavier, but, you know, it's also more mass on target. And more mass is good. Velocity isn't really everything. I mean, it does help, but... But as I say that, I still carry 9mm, but whatever. But one of these days, I will pick me up a uh, 1903. I'd like a World War I model, just because I don't have any guns from World War I. This is the Second World War. That is a long, bloody bayonet. Where's your sword, dude? Where's your sword? Now, this game can be played co-op. That's one of the things I love about classic games is they actually cared about co-op. Sadly, modern games, uh, not so much. They can barely program what they got. I mean, you consider, like, how advanced this really is. I'd like to see a remaster of that. One where the boat doesn't look like it's floating over the water. Uh, there we go. K98Ks are better than the Lee Enfield. That's a hard question to answer because the number four Mark I, uh, the World War II Lee Enfield, is I think a better gun to shoot just because it does have that rear aperture. Although I have a scope on mine, but whatever. And you got that 10 round mag. Not that you would actually load the 10 rounds, though. I can barely see the front. Uh, Mildred. Yeah, World War I 1903 is going to have worse sights. Because the uh, 03A3 also has a rear aperture. Well, the people in the cutscenes look god awful. Like, in game, they don't look that bad. Don't let him get eaten by a crocodile. Now, uh, in the real world. Uh, there was a Japanese attack, I forget where, where they had to cut through, like, a swamp that was filled with crocodiles. And I think something like 30 people died eaten by bloody crocodiles. Yeesh. Uh, there were some heat-treating issues on the uh, original 1903, but they were either already found by now, 100 years later, or they already all blew up, so... Eh. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, 
little too calm. Yeah, that's the thing about uh, video games. It's kind of like uh, World War II games where uh, the Japanese have submachine guns. When in reality, I think they made like just a couple thousand. But you need like IFF or something because like everybody has pretty much the same uniform on. Maybe that means like we're all human, man. Oh, come on. That totally should have hit him. Of course, Battlefield World War One did have the issue where uh, there's a mission where you don what is basically Space Marine battle armor and charge across a field wielding like a belt fed heavy machine gun. So th th that's not exactly historically accurate. Honestly, I would like a uh, old school early 2000s World War One game, you know. Medal of Honor 1, I think, would have been better and a little more historically accurate. You wouldn't have had dudes in power armor in 1914 Italy, or 1918 Italy. I don't think the Italians had that. <laughs> they were doing good not to use black power. Oh, did I shoot my own guy? Yeah, I did. Come on, Gunny, get out of the way. Or at least shoot him with your shotgun. Please do something. Come on, come on. Okay, let's save. Yeah, but taking out uh, enemies with bolt actions is just a little more difficult than it should be. Yeah, we get kind of boring after a while, and all the guns would basically be the same. So those actually were real, but the game over exaggerated. I think, like, there were some armored soldiers, yeah, but they sat behind a machine gun and they still couldn't take rifle rounds. You certainly, certainly couldn't walk around in armor like you're a space marine. Uh, eventually I'll probably do uh, another Medal of Honor one, but I like to keep things varied. But I still need to stream uh, Medal of Honor Spearhead. Which is the expansion for the uh, Allied Assault, which is a really good game. It's where you got to shoot uh, British weapons and even uh, Russian ones. It's the first time I ever heard of the PBSH 41. God damn it. Reload. I think I prefer Medal of Honor to COD. I mean, COD is good, don't get me wrong, but Medal of Honor just feels more. It feels more like a game, whereas COD is in many cases sort of a, a battlefield tour almost. Thanks to all the bots. I think I might have shot him in the arm. Would you people shoot him already? Sacrifice return to Castle Wolfenstein to prevent COD. Oh man, I don't know if I could do that. Really though, you don't have to sacrifice that game because it's Medal of Honor Allied Assault that gave rise to COD. The developers of Medal of Honor Allied Assault were the ones that would go on to make Call of Duty, so I would sacrifice Medal of Honor uh, in a heartbeat. As much as I love it, I'd rather have Return to Castle Wolfenstein, because RTCW is a better game. You have more varied enemies, better environments, better weapons, much better narrative. Don't get me wrong, Medal of Honor Allied Assault is good, but if it can prevent COD 4, and thus the broing of games, and then finally just the death of games. I, I could live with that. I could totally live with that. I actually am going to stream COD in a couple of months. The first one. I'm getting shot in the back. Well, he took like half my health off. Save. Because had we not had Call of Duty 1, we would later have, we would have had Call of Duty 2, which really uh, popularized regenerative health, two-weapon rule. Oh, that was more Halo that did that, I guess. Camouflage actually works pretty well in this game. And you really got a quick save all the time in this game, because look how much damage I took just from one guy. One of these days, I do need to 
stream Brothers in Arms, but that was a game I ne never played until the the future. For me, I consider pretty much anything I played post 2010 as like the future. It wasn't stuff I just discovered on my own. Because I really got invested in like internet culture in 2010. Now there's another Medal of Honor Pacific War game called Medal of Honor Pacific Assault and I just got stabbed in the back. You stabbed me in the back, dude. Not cool. Yeah, Medal of Honor Pacific Assault. It's not quite as good as this game, but it's still pretty passable. World at War and Black Ops 1. I actually played both of those games. I had them for the uh, Xbox 360. And uh, World at War is not bad. I even did a video on World at War. Blops 1 was pretty generic. What do the numbers mean, Mason? Uh, I played the multiplayer for that a little bit. Back in the old gaming group days. And yeah, COD does indeed feel more like a, a movie, whereas Medal of Honor feels more like, you know, a video game. Which is what it's supposed to be. That's a debate that can be had. Should games be more cinematic or should they be more, be more you know, video games? Oh crap, he's got his sword. And I... Well, you know what? If, the, if you run out of ammo or you're stuck with a bolt action and a guy charges you with a sword, you're going to be kind of screwed. COD Vietnam. Yeah, they did have that short Vietnam segment, but yeah. Okay, and I'm gonna die because I was busy reading the chat. How dare you, um, Cyrus Von Knox. He's secretly a Japanese spy! That's the guy that shot me in the back. Okay, you little bastard. I don't mean like he's a little bastard because he's short. I mean he's a little bastard because he shot me in the back. No, that's the gunny. There he is. Oh, crap. This is why bolt actions are crap for at least CQB. There we go. My 1911. Oh crap, I'm gonna... That's where bayonets, I guess, work. We're gonna run because um, they keep stabbing me in the face. Exactly, because like if you want to watch a movie, you'll do that. Uh, I just uh, I, that's the sad part about gaming uh, post like COD Four. Everything had to be very cinematic. All right, you little. No, no, we can't call him little. They might call me the racism if I call him little. I'm not saying he's short because he's he's Japanese. I'm just saying he's an asshole. What does he have? What was he shooting at me with? That wasn't a bolt action, otherwise that guy's trained for like his entire- waiting all of his life. Okay, I am so screwed. Yep, and then I got- I got stabbed again. Just keep stabbing me in the back. There are a couple go for in Iraq games, but yeah, they're not that many. Yeah, the PS5 had, like, no games on it. It's a good thing I've got the PC. Arma has mods for everything. There's Star Wars mods, there's Halo mods. All kinds of crap. Never really got into Arma, though. I did play the, uh, predecessor to Arma, Operation Flashpoint. I got a lot of nostalgia for Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising. That game, I'm I'm nostalgic for that game for one reason. I never beat it, never even got very far in it. God damn it. Good thing that grenade is piss weak. But I got a lot of nostalgia for Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising because that was a game where I used that as a, a means of dating a girl who I let her uh, get into a very serious relationship with. And so it was like the first game she and I played. It was the most awesome experience ever. It's not a very good game though. I mean, I guess it is if you're really into tactical shooters, but I never was and 
I have some memories of that game where I accidentally ordered the pilot to leave the helicopter, and he did, and we crashed. Because I didn't remember the controls. Well, the time I flipped the Jeep and everybody died. Needless to say, that game was rock hard. But FYI, if you're in a helicopter, don't order the pilot to get out. Because, um, yeah, you, you, you'll crash and not, not fun. Come on, get it! Now, that's a video I could do. Like, the top five date games. Which would be, uh, Operation Flashpoint, uh, Left 4 Dead, and that god-awful game that I absolutely hate, um, not Dead Rising. Oh, what the hell is that game called? Zombie Island? Something like that. Dead by Daylight? No, not Dead by Daylight. Dying Light! That game! God, I hated that game. I know people love it, but man, I hate that. Go on, shoot him in the chest! Really could use a submachine gun now. I also played Dead Island as well as sort of a date game, but man, I hated that game too. Dying Light and Dead Island. Man, I hated those games. They're just boring! Those are two games I only ever played because uh, the friend group I was a part of at the time loved them for some reason, but man, they were terrible. And I keep thinking that is the weapon switch button, and it is not. Delta Force. Ah, oh, they were... They were moved from GOG. Damn. Those Delta Force games uh, were some games my grandfather really liked. Although I could never really get into them that much. Oh yeah, there's a Dying Light 2 now, isn't it? Yeah, well. Dying Light 1 was fucking boring. It's one of those things where I played through like the first mission I don't know how many times. But, whatever. I suffered through it. I guess it was worth it. I guess I'm a little nostalgic for Dying Light 1. I would never want to play it, but it does... But I do have a good memory of playing it with, uh, a friend group. I actually asked a girl out during that game, and, uh, she said yes. But ultimately didn't turn out that well. It made the game somewhat worth playing, but I would never play it again! Flashpoint Cold War Crisis. I tried playing that, but didn't really like it. Give me all the submachine guns, people. Maybe give me a bayonet. Dude, shoot him with your shotgun! Cal Katarn, this guy is not. Tuesday 11 p.m., the Soul Reaver 1 and 2. Never got into the Soul Reaver series. I'm not even really sure what it's about. I assume it's some kind of third person game, though. Some kind of third person hack and slash kind of thing, maybe? This is actually a really good game. I mean, yeah, the aiming's pretty awkward, but I've forgotten how much I like this game. I love how I keep hitting these guys in the feet. It's like Quentin Tarantino's playing. Dude, would you shoot him with your shotgun? Do something! I've got a pistol and a sniper rifle. Like, I don't even have any extendo mags. Yeah, the 2011, which is the uh, Double Stack 1911, is getting a lot more popular, but it's been around for years. I'm going to do a video at some point on one of the first 2011s, the uh, Parrot Ordnance P-13. It's a 1911 from 1993, I think, where you can somehow stuff 13 rounds into a uh, double stack mag. Legacy of Kane Soul Weaver. Shakespeare with vampires? <laughs> okay. Even the... Rene Abba Du Bois was in Legacy of Cain. Hmm. I did not know that. I don't really have much of a story of how I first played this game that was actually entertaining. I mean, I went to Target, uh, my grandfather paid for it, and that was it. <laughs> that was pretty much it. I mean, this is just one of those games that I bought. It's not like, uh, when I tried to get AVP2, but... I uh, didn't have enough money for it because I lost one of my $10 bills. 
which turned out to not be lost. And then when I tried to finally buy it, they said I was too young to buy it. So I got uh, Starfleet Command 3, and then finally, like a month later, I got that game. Janos Aldrin, huh? Tempted to look up the uh, cutscenes just to hear him. Sadly, Rene, however the fuck you pronounce his last name, is long since dead. But he made it to like 80, so. That's, that is not bad. This was on the Wii? I didn't know this was on the Wii. Ah, the Wii. That was a console that you kind of had to be there. Everybody was going nuts about the Wii for the longest of time. I didn't get mine till like 2009. I remember at my school, there was like a, because I was in high school in the uh, early 2000s, uh, there was like a, a drawing to win a Wii. And I remember the guy who won it was like, I got a Wii! Like, he was really excited about it. For me, though, like, there was never anything on the Wii that I cared that much to play. I mean, like, it was like Wii Sports, and that was about it. I mean, the motion controls were worked, but it, there was only so much you could do with them. I mean, Resident Evil 4, which I streamed, I think, like, last week. I mean, the motion controls are kind of neat, but that's really all it was, is it was kind of neat. And, uh, yeah, there's only so much you can really do with it. I mean, Wii Bowling, if the console only could play Wii Bowling, I could see why it would sell millions, but that's pretty much all it was good at. Maybe if someone gave me a repeating firearm... Dude, why didn't you walk right in front of my sights? Gunny, um... I don't think the Gunny's AI is doing too good. Just don't think he, uh, he, he kind of needed to get some more, um, yeah. Bip. <laughs> exactly. Oh man, that reminds me, like, there was a number of drawings going on that day. One was to win a laptop. And, uh, there was somebody who won one who had a name very similar to mine. And so, like, I heard the name, and it's like, did I win? And then, no. The, the, the last name was, was different. But it had the... The first and middle name were exactly the same. Last name different. It's like, <gasps> no. I'm pretty sure the laptop was terrible, but whatever. Please tell me we're not going in the... In a big-ass circle. No, but we can actually... We'll go ahead and save. Why not? With a Wiimote and Numchuck. I don't know, the Wiimote Nunchuck, I will do a stream of uh, the GoldenEye remake. The big problem with any sort of FPS with that is you kind of got to hold your arms like that, whereas with the controller, you just kind of can rest it in your lap and not have your arms held up over your head. Yeah, Metroid Prime, I got to do the video on that at some point. Not that I really care about the Metroid Prime series much. I never got into Metroid. I mean, I played Super Metroid and never really got anywhere in that game. I have Metroid Prime for the GameCube and never got anywhere in that game either. Man, if you don't, like, drop down and... If you don't go down on Samus Aran, people hate on you. Because I said in a video that I just didn't like those games. I didn't say they were bad, but I said I didn't like them. And man, I got blown out in the comments. And people get offended if you don't like the Metroid games. It's like... It, they're just not for me, people. Uh, it's kind of like... I guess, like, for some people, Metroid is like Mario. Like, if you say you don't like Mario, then, like, you're of the Satan. Medal of Honor Vanguard? I don't think I ever played Medal of Honor Vanguard. I don't think I have. Back in the day, I primarily just played this game. Uh, and Medal of Honor... Oh, crap! Medal of Honor, Allied Assault, and uh, Spearhead. And Frontline. Big problem with any of those games is just I can never figure out where the hell I'm supposed to go. I tried playing Metroid Zero Mission and never got anywhere in that game either. Metroid Fusion is my favorite. That's the only one where I've actually been able to complete the game without getting frustrated with it.
I wonder if Twitter would get pissed off at the developers for using very Japanese-inspired music. I, I just get the feeling that they'd complain about that. Because you know how Twitter is. They're fucking nuts. Okay, where... What's the objective here? Keep an eye on the ground. Jungle. Keep heading southeast through the dense jungle. Okay, so we want to go south. Uh, always be wary of an officer with a map and a compass. Middle of Honor Breakthrough? Believe it or not, I've never played that. Okay, so there's where we can save. So I'm guessing... Uh oh, don't tell me we're lost. I think we came from here, so we want to go over here. I think. Yeah, I never played Medal of Honor Breakthrough. Uh, for some reason, I never owned it. And then, in the modern era, the, uh... There it is. And in the modern era, I did play Medal of Honor, uh... Airborne, which is very good, but very short. Very, very short. Not unlike the enemies revive me. Not uh, that that would be wrong. I think there actually is a Vietnam FPS like that. There's the uh, Viet Cong games that came out in the early 2000s. But actually, no, I don't think those are FPS games. I think those are third-person shooters. Man, I haven't thought about those games in years. Why do they have semi-autos, but we don't? Oh, come on. That totally should have hit him. Okay, there we go. We got him. I'd imagine that game would get pretty tough just because of how short it is. I need to stream that at some point. Crazy to think that Medal of Honor uh, Airborne is almost 20 years old. Uh, Gunny, could you have, like, shot him instead just kind of ran in front of him? Yeah, we're going to be using harsh language soon if we don't find some ammo. Or I can just keep throwing grenades by accident. LSD. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could. That's one of those things that sounds like a good idea, but would probably be really annoying if you had to actually play it. Okay, I am so screwed because I'm. God damn it! And since this is um, 2004, he just says SOB instead of son of a bitch. Although, around, this is sort of like a transitional time period where, like, we'd go from, like, no swearing to all the swearing. Harsh language? Yeah, pretty much. I remember seeing something on Twitter a long time ago in a galaxy not so far away where there was some idiot trying to argue that the Japanese didn't launch Pearl Harbor. And my first thought to that was, like, wait a minute. Then who else had the sea lift capacity to do that? But then again, it, it, it's Twitter, so it, it's not surprising that a weeb would be like, Japanese is not responsible for Pearl Harbor. It's like, okay, then who was? Okay, so I have no ammo. Oh, crap. Blow him up! Thank you for walking directly onto my grenade, dude. Okay, is that... Okay, we, we're now down to melee. Smack him! I like how it takes two 30 out six shots to kill one of these guys, but just one, you know, smack with the stock. Make it make sense. Do you think you can do? You're already dead. You just don't know it yet. Yeah, neurodivergent is kind of condescending. But people use that as an excuse to, well, act inappropriate half the time. They don't even have a problem. Smacky smacky time, because I've got no ammo! 
I hate it when first person shooters do that. I mean, I can just kill everything with one hit from my rifle. It's like, why do we even use bullets? Why don't we just have people like, have like a wooden stick? Clearly it's superior. The fruit is delicious. Uh, okay. I don't know if I'd randomly just eat some jungle fruit, but okay. Man, Griffin's just eating everything. I don't even know what he's picking up. Did we go in a big ass circle? I hope we didn't. We went and save any. Well, there were enemies here, so we were killing them, so I guess we weren't. Okay, so we can't get through here. I guess this was getting to a, a save slot. Yeah, let's go ahead and save here anyway, just in case the. Just in case we have some problems with the save states. Sometimes PCSX2. We'll bork the save states for whatever reason. And yeah, one concussion can knock someone out. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> or, you know, maybe Griffin is just so strong, he's just like snapping spines. He's like a predator. Okay, this level is now kind of crap because it's going on way too long. It will, it will definitely be in my review. Your, your juggle level went on too long. It needed to be like half as long, and it really did. Is like, and there needs to be a little, a, a little better um, guide to like what we're doing here. Is it's just, oh, we gotta follow the na the native, follow the native. To, wait, hold on, who, what? Head southwest to find the tunnel that leads to the second hut. Go east out of the to the bunker. Follow the native to the caves. Um, I don't did not see that guy. What native? What are you talking about, game? You don't give me any ammo, and you give me very cryptic instructions on what to do. Um. Okay, well, okay, so we must have come through here already. Oh dear. Are we gonna be lost? So remember the game being more straightforward than this. Okay, so there's that. Theoretically, we would go down there, but maybe we go over here. I'm just playing on normal. I'm just a good normal man when it comes to this sort of thing. Smacky, smacky. We found an intelligence document, but it'd be nice if we found some ammo. Bullets. You know, uh, car you know, it feels like 2020 all over again. All I can do is just beat people up with my rifle. I mean, at least they let me do that. Okay, so the music changed. So I guess we're getting close to the end, maybe? I guess? Is there any uh, ammo in here, maybe? No, there's, there's nothing. There is a gas can. No, it's not a gas can. That's a toolbox. And he has phased into the truck. I just smacked the gunny in the face. It's because you aren't sharing your ammo, dude. You know, I'm the one doing all the work here. You're just kind of like wandering around, you know. I have to go fight a sniper here, and I have no means of attacking him. Because I got no ammo. Zero. None. Throw a grenade at him. Maybe that'll do something. Oh, thanks, Gunny. Thank you for actually shooting the enemy. But you won't give me any of your shells. I've literally spent this entire level just beating people in the face. And somehow this has worked. Finally found some ammo. Now I don't have any health. Brilliant. Just, just brilliant. Generation. Yeah, they were pro. They, well, they were the greatest of them all. I always kind of laugh when people uh, on the twatters like it. Whoa, um, well, uh, game, you could have told me I could blow up the generator. That guy um, has got to be the crew. Okay, so moral of the story, why don't we walk 
out of here and get shot in the back immediately. Oh, you little bastard. I shot him right in the head. I shot him in the head again. Okay, so we might be kind of screwed here. Oh, there's always generations that are going to uh, endure worse. Okay, there we go. Destroy the ammo depot and secure the depot. Okay, well, I guess we could go to Home Depot if we wanted. Okay, there we go. And let's just shoot. Bam. And boom. I'm not sure a 30 odd six round would do that, but you know what? Whatever, it's a video game. Yeah, there's always gonna be uh, people who are gonna have a lot of bad times. But imagine you're the generation between 1930 and 1950. Actually, no, the generation between 1920 and 1950. There we go. You're not gonna be having good days. Things might be bad today, but um, yeah, if you were born in 1920, not fun. <laughs> I hope I can find some health soon. I can guarantee you I would have cheated in this game, like, a lot. This definitely feels like a cheat code game. Yeah, but like, food is still mostly affordable. Well, more affordable than, say, like, 1931 or something like that. But yeah, the economy's not been great for a long, long time. So there's a bit further to fall compared to, like, say, 1930. None of us have to worry about, uh, you know, not surviving the winter. Oh, come on. I shot him in the chest, and he's like, yeah, whatever. Sadly, I don't have enough health to just walk up and punch him in the face. Blast him. Nice. Cheat codes are pretty good. Actually make games that are overly difficult, you know, doable. Okay, let's like crouch. Completely out of grenades. Oh, come on. I shot him in the pelvis. Okay, good. That better kill him. Nope. Oh, no. Please tell me I didn't do what I think I did. You bastard. Okay, can I? No, I can't. Oh, fuck my life. Okay, so we can't actually, um, you can't undo the save state. And so I saved just as he shot me. Oh, Frontline, without a doubt. Frontline is vastly, well, I guess it's a good thing we saved, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad I did that. I just did that kind of like, why the hell not? Had I not done that, I would be so screwed right now. We haven't even lost, the okay, let's go ahead and do a save state. I'm down to zero ammo again. Frontline is vastly better than this game. I mean, this isn't bad, but once again, this level is going on way too long. Like, I'm already getting kind of bored with this. And I have no ammo. No health. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, cheat codes, that was... Cheat codes, I guess, went the way of the dinosaur when games became more broified. That's the only problem when the barrier to entry becomes lower, you know? You're gonna get people who don't really embrace the whole nerd culture. Yeah, this is definitely not a very fun mission. I mean, I, I'm already pretty much sick of this. And I gotta go all the way back. I like how uh, the gunny there was just doing like a Smooth criminal dance. Ugh. 
it still isn't a terrible game. I'm not that, I'm not gonna hate on this that much. Smacky smacky. So like, why can't there be an ammo spawn in this uh, hut? Like, why, why would there not be? I guess is the better question. Like, how was the game better by not having an ammo spawn there? Yeah, that's something I mentioned in a lot in a in a vlog is that I mourn the death of true nerd culture, where people actually cared about these franchises in the way that they don't today. Smacky smack. At least I still got plenty. Ooh, could that be ammo? Nope, it's a grenade, which I don't need because they're worthless. DLCs might have done that as well, but like, you know, once games became super easy to finish, you know, it's not like you really even needed cheat codes anymore. That grenade is utterly worthless. Because that didn't even hurt him. Okay, here we go. This epic music, and we're... God, this... Aiming is terrible. Okay. Yeah, mainstream anything, you know. The more generic you make something, the less it's going to actually attract people who will pay for it. Okay, we're mostly alive. Got about half health. Gaming didn't really go super mainstream until around 2007 through 10, and then now it's just pretty much gone. I mean, people still obviously play video games, but it's not quite the same. I do like some of the excuses that uh, people will give. It's like, oh, you just aged out of gaming, or, you know, it's not made... I love that it's not made for you. Whoever thought that a bolt-action rifle for a mission like this was a good idea is an idiot. The big problem is, uh, when it comes to modern gaming, is everything is political, and so, you know, there's always going to be the message in games, and that turns off a lot of people. But sadly, even if they didn't have the message, it still wouldn't be very good. Oh, crap. Goddamn grenades. I'm glad that wood protected me. The only problem with the Yakuza games is it's really not a genre I care about, so it doesn't really do much for me. Like, there's great games, only I don't care about any of them. Oh, you bastard. Ammo? Back him! Dude, Nick Zero for the first time, too. Yep, Duke Nukem Zero is pretty great. Stalker 2 is not a game that is something I'd want to play. I played Stalker 1. I got it back in 2008 thinking it was going to be kind of like Fallout 3, and it was not. Uh, it was just way too hard. Like, ridiculously difficult. Medical Canteen? I like how he's got, like, jungle camouflage on in the building. No, it'll spot him then. Oh, crap! You might have had a sword, but I had a uh, wood stock. Boiled linseed oil to the face. But he did a lot of damage to me. Uh, it wouldn't happen to be, like, band-aids in this place, would there? No, of course not. I'm not gonna save just because, uh, yeah, if I die again... Okay, so he's gonna sit there with his shotgun and do nothing. And he's gonna shoot him in the foot. But then again, I can't complain too much because I did the same thing. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Iron blooded villains to Trump. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, they're gonna be doing that. They're gonna be doing that for the next four years. Ugh. <sighs> 
But I mean, whenever it's a president from the political party that shall remain nameless, the media always goes after him. I remember back in the early 2000s. I remember. Uh, is he in there? No, it will not open. Okay, so the guy's got to be somewhere in here. I'm saying they can. I didn't want my politics shoehorned in. Wow. But that's not surprising, you know. For some, politics is their religion. Okay, where is the dude who talked to me? I know it wasn't that guy because he isn't conscious anymore. Oh. One moment, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, and we're back. Might be the dead of winter, but we need air conditioning. The greatest of all innovations. It gets way too hot in this room. We're running all these computers. Let's see, we're about oh, 36 minutes. It was always woke. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing that. We've always been at war with East Asia. We've always been at war with Oceania. Rumors of respiratory problems and rashes. Ah. I saw a video talking about that, but I didn't watch it. I just saw the thumbnail. Yeesh. That's a dangerous little rifle there. Why even let me click on the door if none of them will open? Okay, let's see here. Did they have to make this bloody hut really confusing for no reason? Alright, so I heard a guy talk. Is it on board? Yep. Wow. I'm usually just around apolitical people, so they don't really go on about political stuff too much. Or call me a glowy. <laughs> I miss the good old 2010s where nobody cared. Or there'd be like a guy who would be overly political that everybody would think, would think was a weirdo. Okay, I'm confused. And the frame rate is starting to give me motion sickness. The Natsox or the Jap... Or the Japanese. That's a good question. They both killed about the same amount of people. Uh... Huh. I'm not really sure where to go now. I'm starting to get motion sickness from this bloody game. Uh... Okay. Ugh, this game is starting to make me feel sick. So I think we're just gonna go to the ending chat. Uh, more evil. Since both the National Socialists and the Japanese ended up killing pretty much the same amount of people, I would go on to say that probably the Japanese were a little more evil because they had really bad supply problems and historically they actually did um, eat people. They, they, they practiced cannibalism. So... Yeah, whereas the, the National Socialists didn't really do that. Uh, there's one particularly gross story that I learned from Mr. Felton uh, talking about how a bunch of Japanese college professors, um, well, ate a dude's liver as a dessert. So, you know, I'm, I'm just saying that sounds pretty bad. And yes, Unit 731. So, and yeah, you know, the, the, the political um, purity spirals are bad. I just miss the days when you could have both left and right work together. Or at least the regular people could. Without, you know, everything getting political. Because I remember there was a guy in my gaming group around 2013 who was very much what we today would refer to as woke. And uh, mainly all that guy did was talk about D&D. That was it. You know, sometimes he'd go off on certain political things. But it was mainly just D&D &D and Star Wars and stuff like that. No one cared. So, it's kind of sad that that happened. 
Alright, normally I like to go about two hours, but today, that game gave me motion sickness for some reason. Most games don't do that, but I'm starting to feel kind of woozy. So, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm General Otz. Uh, next time, I think we're playing a PC game, so it shouldn't happen. Until then, I'm wishing you good, um, Metal of Honor Frontline, Metal of Honor Breakthrough, whatever. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and please consider leaving a like or a comment as the algorithm desires your soul. And I want to thank all those fans who have supported this channel, both past and present.